Perseverance plus God equals triumph. Read by Tyler Childs. My name is Tyler Childs. This is my story, my testimony. When I first met Mr. Art Moore at the dentist's office in 2019, I couldn't believe who I was speaking to, a former defensive tackle for the New England Patriots. He spent several years in the NFL until the night he was poisoned. After listening to Mr. Moore's experience and how he survived miraculously, I was beyond grateful when he requested that I share my story. I never passed up an opportunity to talk about my trials and tribulations. My main goal in life is to support those in despair because I know the feeling. Trust me, I do. I hope my story inspires the reader to avoid the mistakes I made, but I want to show you how I turned my tragedy into triumph, my negatives into positives, and my misery into joy. My story has been described by others as emotional, inspirational, mind-blowing, and much more. I aim to help at least one person with what I am about to share. At the age of 18, I crashed my 2004 white Ford Mustang on the night of December 20th, 2008. After waking up from a medically induced coma a month later, I was told I would be bound to a wheelchair for the rest of my life. My father, who I truly love as much as he loves me, tried to instill his wisdom and life advice into my way of thinking, but I was too ignorant and stubborn as a teenager. Before my 18th birthday, he said these words that play over and over in my head almost every day. Son, 18 can make you or break you. I believe it's fair to say the make you part went in one ear and out the other. However, if I may request, I should spare any sympathy or pity. Why? Well, I wholeheartedly stand by my belief that I am responsible for the circumstance because I was drinking and driving that night. My intention is not to sound rude, but I accept the fact I brought this situation upon myself. I accepted that I am fully responsible for my paralysis, but I still admire the kind words if you cannot hold back your sympathy. Plus, not to sound too arrogant, I am a sucker for compliments, especially the one from females, with all due respect. The past 12 years since my accident has shown that people will offer kind words and gestures despite my request to prove their concerns and empathy are genuine and not an attempt to make up for their own mistakes. Now, some individuals might naively think that they will be in the Lord's good graces by lending their support to this poor cripple in times of need. But I cannot judge what God already knows. When I'm feeling sulky during the occasional moments, I tend to think I'm being treated as a charity case by someone I just met. However, I do my best to bite my tongue, shake the irrational feeling, remind myself to smile, and be the likable man I have grown to be. I was not sure if I should provide a biography of myself. Sure, I enjoy sharing my story, but I have a tendency to carry on a conversation longer than necessary. I'm not a fan of boredom, and I never want to waste someone's time. After contemplating, I decided to provide a glimpse of my life before that dreadful December night. My purpose is not to sound cocky, pretentious, or sanctimonious as I share the details of my life. My purpose is to show how being cocky, pretentious, and sanctimonious is a recipe for disaster. Forgive me if this may seem awkward. I'm actually laughing while I write this, but I understand if this is a bit strange. But that out the way, I hope you enjoy this portion I wish to share. Some might relate or share a similar background, but if not, I'm forever grateful to those reading what I have to give. So here we go. I was born on October 24th, 1990 in Picayune, Mississippi. I spent most of my childhood growing up in the small country town of Poplarville, but shared time with my lovely mother every other weekend in the coastal city of Wayland, Mississippi. Growing up in Poplarville was overwhelming at times. I was, as many folks describe, an amazing athlete. I always knew I was blessed to have the genetics of an elite athlete, 
but I put in a lot of work to become the best I could be. My work ethic started to pay off as I grew. From coach pitch until my final year of Little League Baseball, I made the All-Star team. At the age of 12, I was one of the tallest kids in my class, 5 feet 7 inches. But I probably weighed 110 pounds, soaking wet. Despite my physique and dealing with asthma, I was in pretty good shape. During Little League that year, I hit not just my first but several home runs, including some to the woods that surrounded Bill Watson Park in Poplarville. My speed increased out of nowhere. To my recollection, I don't believe I was ever caught stealing. If I ended up on first base, I was still second and third within less than five pitches. Then, my favorite, I was still home plate. I also threw 75 miles an hour, which is 98 miles an hour if you just for a major league pitcher's mound. I never forget what my coach, Al Tynes, did to figure out how fast I threw. He was a cop for the Poplarville Police Department. And since we didn't have a radar gun like the baseball scouts, he clocked me using the radar gun from his cop car. After the end of the year, I felt like a king when I signed my first autograph to the father of one of my fellow teammates, Jade Sumner. The memories I have are such a blessing. I'd be lying if I told you I didn't reminisce about the good old days. I was enjoying the game. To be honest, it bothers me a bit to talk about this subject because I was so humble about my talent. I was not pompous or braggadocious like some of my fellow players, friends at the time. I just loved playing sports by putting in a 1,000% effort in every game I played. Unfortunately, I no longer can show it, but I have witnesses that can attest to my athletic ability better than I can. I'll never forget those Poplarville memories, and I'll never forget the ones I was fortunate to call my family, friends, and teammates. In 2005, my freshman year of high school was one to remember. As a skinny, pimple-faced 15-year-old, I was eager to show my baseball coach, Coach Cedric Smith, I have what it took to start on the varsity team, and I did. I couldn't stop smiling when I saw I earned the starting position in center field. Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to hit until we made it to the playoffs that year. I played center field and ran bases for the regular season, but I did not think I would perform as well as I did once the playoffs began. I ended my freshman year with a batting average of .333, but one play changed everything. We were three outs away from defeating Brookhaven, during the second playoff game, one of the best teams I played against. In the seventh inning, no outs, bases loaded. The biggest guy on Brookhaven's team hit a screaming light drive in my direction. I jumped the fence and robbed a home run to end the game with our first victory in the 2006 playoffs in Lawrence County. It was the first time I experienced divine intervention. I could hear chants from the crowd. That's a freshman. That's our boy, TC. That moment solidified my future. After that, I thought I had the potential to play Major League Baseball. I will never forget the trial dropping faces the following year when I stole third base while the pitcher still had the ball in his glove against pedal. After hitting a screaming line drive single in the left field, my second at bat, when I reached first base, pedal's first baseman asked me, What's your 40 time? I replied, no clue. I just run. By my senior year, I was so full of myself because of the constant compliments I kept receiving over the course of my life. I started to disregard everything, and I mean everything besides baseball. That was a big mistake. I took on a Mr. Big Shot attitude because I thought I had it all. A beautiful girlfriend, a nice car, offers to play college baseball, and a plethora of loving friends and family. I made friends with everyone. I didn't care about your skin color, sexual preferences, taste and fashion, music, politics, etc. In short, I didn't care who you were, but with the mindset I had at the time, we were going to party. That type of mindset combined with asinine arrogance and foolishness 
led to my accident on the night of December 20th, 2008.